Hello, Internets. I'm Johnny Womack. Of course, I've got Deuce. What's up, man? Hey, so uh, where are we at today? We're at the Bat Cave. The Bat Cave. Look at this. Got a little, uh, this even says the Bat Cave right here. It's awesome. The Bat Cave. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Our friend Thomas Galvin. This is his Bat Cave. And we're here to chronicle the Bat Cave visit as well as talk to him about all kinds of things. So, are you ready, Deuce? I am, it's gonna be fun. You all ready? Right. Let's rock, we got our beers. We got yep. our beers right here. Because we can't show up to anybody's house without a little little beer. Yeah, cheers, <laughs> cheers, Deuce, cheers, 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 cheers. Let's see what Thomas is up to. Hello. <gasps> Thomas. Oh my goodness. Hey, what's going on, Thomas? Hi, Kyle. Hi, Johnny. It's How are good you? Good to see you, brother. Thank you. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, 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 awesome. Welcome to my back cave. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. Yeah, come on in. Wow. Just a few little uh, snippets of my life here. Just oh. a few little trinkets, if just you will. Just a few, yeah. Just, just, a, just a couple of... This is a small collection. I, I... Oh my goodness. Just a little bit. I mean, there's... I was about to say, me and you's definition of small is two <laughs> totally different words. Yes. <laughs> wow. This is incredible. Hello, internets. My name is Johnny Womack, and of course, I've got my main man. Deuce, what's going on, man? Hey man, this of course is the happy hour with Johnny and Deuce, and every episode of the happy hour with Johnny and Deuce starts off with the patented Deuce salute. Yes sir. <sighs> happy Sunday morning everybody. Happy Sunday morning. <laughs> Cheers. And of course, if you're watching the video version of this, you're like, wow, where am I? Deuce, where are we right now? We're in the Bat Cave, man. The Bat Cave. Oh my goodness. Uh, as we're talking, you'll see some footage of us uh, doing this. But uh, wow, we're joined in the Bat Cave by Mr. Thomas Galvin. How are you, sir? I'm doing quite well, thank you. And of course, some of you may know him from our Sci-Fi Saturdays, Bartow. We were doing. He was there as well, and you were. Uh, him as yeah, well you were in the Time Machine. Yes, uh, that's my baby right over there. Yeah, awesome. I mean, wow. I'm blown away. I literally came in here and I, and I had a. I, I fanboyed out for a couple minutes. No, he, he had a nerd. <laughs> he had a nerdgasm. I what sure he did. Had. I sure did. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There's, One of the best quotes someone said when they came in here. They're like going, "I don't know where to stop looking." Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's all over. It's like all of your senses at the same time get ambushed, but in a good way. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. So I guess the first obvious question is, uh, how long have you been working on the Batcave? Well, I've been living in this uh, establishment for about nine years now. Uh, uh -huh. So when we moved into this house, that was a requirement that I had to have my space because it's actually about 90 percent of the stuff that you see in here you used to live in in a four foot by six foot walk-in closet. Oh, wow. Yikes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used to live in an apartment in uh, in Orlando, uh, close to SeaWorld, and basically the back cave was a walk-in closet off my master bedroom. And all that, my desk and all the stuff was just plastered onto the walls in that one little room. And it got the nickname the Bat Cave because of course the majority of the Batman merchandise and collectibles. Wow. You told us when you when we were walking around, I was shooting some B-roll footage. You said you got started with the Batman the Animated Series. Oh, back in the '90s, yes, that I love that. Cartoon. Created by two geniuses, they pioneered. I essentially they pioneered media in that year in that era, and they've changed the way we look at television and movies and cartoons. And Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, um, they created a lot of amazing uh, characters uh, in brought the Batman. Life. They brought it to life. But that was one of the things was for me, it was like it was so dark and gritty. Like they, I, I think if I if I read correctly, uh, Bruce Timm would actually create it on black backgrounds, so everything was already dark as well, and he would actually overlay the back, the black backgrounds to make it look even dark, more dark than just doing it, you know, basic colors or whatever. Uh, so I already had that dark, gritty look. And of course, the voice of Batman at the time, and I consider the voice of Batman now, Kevin Conroy, uh, amazing guy. Uh, I mean, he, he, he was able to capture the spirit of not only Bruce Wayne, but of course, Batman. And then of course, we're, we're big geeks here at the Happy Hour and Giant Deuce, unabashed sure. nerds. Yeah. And of course, you couldn't get more nerdy than Mark Hamill himself, Luke Skywalker, doing the voice of the Joker. Which uh, I didn't know at the time. Oh, no? Because the credits rolled so fast back then. I mean, you're watching oh, yeah, it. Oh, yeah, it was like, the credits bam, bam, rolled. bam. You didn't know that it was Richard Mole playing Two-Face and Mark right. Hamill and all these great celebrity voices. Yeah. And it wasn't until, I think, the Mask of the Phantasm movie came out that they did an interview, and I went, 
Luke Skywalker is the Joker? Oh my gosh. Because it was decades before the internet. Right. And uh, we're, no one knew this stuff. It wasn't common knowledge. And it was just phenomenal to find out that these people are were the voices for these classic characters. Right. And it was just amazing. Well, it's it's for me. It's like you bring up Mask of the Phantasm, which was in theaters. By the way, I was there in theaters uh, to see what? that. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. actually in oh, theaters. Wow. Yeah, um, blew me away because like it was really dark, and I was like, wow. I mean, and that was the thing is like, it blurred the lines of what is a cartoon and what is you know just a good movie, right? Because I think at the time when when those were coming out, I mean, other Fox and everyone else was experimenting with Batman or not Batman, but uh, uh, X Men and all that. So there was yeah. a lot of like. You know, people trying to change the face of where you look at cartoons. Because before yeah. that, growing up, Saturday morning cartoons was just Yogi the Bear jumping around in, in the, you know, uh, in the forest and whatnot, and uh, Jellystone Park. So it was like it, when you thought of cartoons, you didn't really think of, you know, this is dark. There's death. There's murder. There's yeah. you know, kidnapping and and hostage and like, you know, they took what was so great about the comics and and put it like you said, they put it on the screen and especially the big screen. Because I mean, the Mask of the Phantasm. Phenomenal. Shirley Walker, I'm a big film score composer. Uh, she scored Mask of the Phantasm. Rest in peace, Shirley Walker. Uh, she was amazing. Um, she scored Mask of the Phantasm. So it really brought, you know, encapsulated that that feeling that Danny Elfman had back in, you know, the 80s, uh, late 80s. So uh, excellent film, excellent film. Have you yep. seen Mask of the Phantasm, Deuce? Actually, no, I haven't. And I've seen <gasps> oh. very, very little. That should be on your Batman. bucket list. Yeah, because yep. the Batman, the animated series, I... I maybe have seen a handful of episodes because Ooh. when I was a kid, my parents wouldn't let me when I came home from school after I got to about middle school, which is kind of when it came out, right. would not let me watch TV after school. It was homework and oh. you had to go oh, play wow. outside. It came okay. on yeah, and it came yeah, on a yeah, four. Sure so it's like I had sure to do did. homework and yep. go outside and play. Yep. So I never got to watch any of it. So at some point, oh. I'm kind of hoping they'll do maybe a Blu-ray release of the whole series. I hope they do. I got all of them up there. Every, oh wow! Every, every last episode. Wow. Yeah. Well, that that will definitely be my homework to get into <laughs> yeah, that so because not only, everybody yeah. said that that's like the best, probably the best portrayal of Batman ever is pretty it's much one Batman of them, the animated sure. series. It is phenomenal. I mean, it spawned original characters. Uh, Paul like Dini, Harley Quinn. Harley Har Quinn would not yep. be around if it yep. was not for Paul Dini. Single-handedly series. created that character, yep. uh, and I. It's funny because Paul Dini, he's a writer as well, and he creates, and he's done Batman comics and whatnot and everything like that. But the guy just, he knows characters. He knows how, and I think that's what's the big story about Batman is like before you had, not that we're going to go on a Tim Burton um, hack and slash here, but uh, <laughs> Tim Burton at the time, the Batman movie was very re revolutionary because no one really had done anything like that before, and it wasn't like cutesy and colorful. It was really dark and, and grimacing and, and whatnot. And, you know, obviously Batman Returns and whatnot after that. And then, of course, you see, I guess I want to ask you, Thomas, like, mm -hmm. where, where do you... What's your thoughts on the Batman movies as a whole? Because obviously they've gone like this, up and down. There's been a cyclical effect here. The only one I ever try to block out is Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah, uh, for good reason. <laughs> other than that, every all the films have their own sp specific niche, and I love right. them for all the. I, you know, you started watching it, you fell in love with Michael Keaton. Thinking, right. Michael Keaton, he's he's not Batman, but you're like, okay, he did Batman. He all did right, a great fine. job. Yeah. And the Nicholson, Jack Nicholson as the Joker is one of the most phenomenal portrayals since. Uh, came around with uh, Heath, Heath Ledger. Ledger. Yeah. And so that started that franchise. And then when it got to uh, Batman Forever, I really liked it at that one because it was so campy and over the top. It almost was paying homage to the 60s version, yet still was a bit gritty, still was a bit dark. I enjoyed Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones as the villains. I didn't like the doubling up of the villains, but that's okay. Um, so those the first three films I thought were fine. I didn't like the fact, though, that... Every time Bruce Wayne fell in love, he had to tell him, I'm Batman. So that was, <laughs> yeah, it was like, hey, by the way, we just finished our appetizers. I'm Batman. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But um, in the long run, I like for the films for what they are. And then, of course, when you come into the Christopher Nolan, I just consider that the Nolan universe. It's oh, on okay. its yep. own. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't tie into anything else. It just It's it's a standalone piece. Yeah. So I, I enjoy all those also. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm up and down as well. Uh, I, I like the first Batman movie. Uh, I don't think Returns, and not now, obviously I might get some hate mail here. <laughs> I don't think Returns is as good as you remember it. I, I think it's been a long time since a lot of people have seen Returns. I think the Returns uh, is definitely weaker than I remember it. I went and watched it recently. I, I get that it was Spike or someone had like a Batman marathon on, and I was like, oh, ooh, okay. Hello. Michelle Pfeiffer, okay, it all was, right. 
it was a little <laughs> too sexual, though. I, I agree. I do. It, it felt it, weird. All the sexual innuendos with Catwoman and Penguin, I, I, I could have done without it. Yeah. But I liked the birth of Catwoman in that one. I liked yeah. the, her transfer, Selena's transformation. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, and then, of course, you go into you know Batman Forever, Val Kilmer. Here's the problem I have with the, with the Batman movies is... Especially the, the the Batman Forever and Batman Robin is you never could get a good person to play Batman and Bruce Wayne. Like I felt Val Kilmer was a better Batman, but I didn't like him as Bruce Wayne. I just didn't. But I thought I thought uh, uh, George Clooney was a better Bruce Wayne because he was very charismatic, uh, yeah. char- charismatic and debonair. But he when he was horrible. as Batman, he wasn't good as Batman, right? Oh, it was horrible. So, it so was you never could, you couldn't really since Keaton, no one can nail a Batman and Bruce Wayne at the same time. And I I felt it wasn't until the Nolan universe I was like, oh, of course Christian Bale uh, takes on the cape and cowl of uh, Batman in the Nolan universe. And I and I do agree with you. I I, I treat it as a separate entity. It's not mm-hmm. the same universe and whatnot. Um, but he's taken pieces, you know, from. Long Halloween, Dark Victory. I mean, he's taken things Dark from Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns. Big time on that. Yeah, so and the Killing Joke. Like he's taken ideas from different iterations. Like he's done his homework, and I think a lot of the fans, the hardcore comic book fans, I think they really appreciate the Nolan universe, even if Dark Knight Rises didn't rise as high as we wanted. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. Bane, I, I, I was not a fan of how they made Bane. I mean, Tom Hardy for you folks at home. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's. What they did to him was uh, very much an injustice. I mean, yes, they made him big, they gave him a mask, but I, I like the incarnation of a Argentinian wrestler who takes the venom and just gets jacked up and becomes a hitman. Yeah. Why do we have to overcomplicate it? I yeah. understand Nolan was trying to weave this whole tapestry of characters. Right. right. And yeah, the fact they brought back Raja Ghul, they brought back, they brought in Talia. I was like, going, oh, okay, I see where he's going with it. But still, the whole I will take you as yeah. a do- as your spot, man. Oh, uh, it just didn't work for me at all. I'm like, yeah. going. but holding the city for ransom again, it was over the top. It was comic bookish. It right. was fantasy. So well, it's funny. We talked about Heath Ledger earlier. I remember when I got the news that uh, he was going to be playing as the Joker. I go, I I don't buy it. There's no way he's going to be the Joker. No. I, I there's no, this guy. This guy from Knight's Tale, a cheesy you know no uh, <laughs> cheesy guy, romance guy. He you know nothing to write home about. I mean he's been okay, but nothing mind blowing. And then I remember that night I we had a bunch of friends and we went to see opening night and we went down sat in the audience and all of a sudden, as soon as the movie started. Because you had some of this B-roll footage, I think, at the end of Batman Begins, of the heist scene of of Dark Knight when he was they were in the uh, bank in the very beginning mm-hmm. of the movie. You got to see that clip if you own like the Blu-ray, or is at the end of the movie in theaters? I forget. Uh, but you got to see that opening scene already. So we're like, okay, we've seen this scene already. And then all of a sudden, it gets really dark. And I get to the point where the whole crowd, like you could feel the energy in the crowd. When every time he talked, it was like, at this time, unfortunately, he had passed away, and. Uh, we were all shocked at that, so we went into it like, okay, where is this going to go? We don't know. And then all of a sudden, it was like, there was that obviously the infamous scene with the pencil. Um, I won't <laughs> go into that spoilers, but you were like, everyone. I mean, people were cursing. They're like, WTF? Like, what is going on? Like, I, I don't get it. People were gasping, and like, we were like, okay, well, this is. And there was a point in the movie where he he had someone up for for a uh, hostage, and he had the, on the camera, and, and he had had the person all wrapped up and everything, and they're, you know, freaking out. And then he was just screaming, laughing, like I got goosebumps. Like oh, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, this isn't a Batman movie anymore. This is a psychological thriller. We, uh, when I went to see it, we equated his performance as good as as and as terrifying as Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. Oh, easy. Was easy. That I think it surpassed ter- that because it, I was never scared of Anthony Hopkins, but Heath Ledger in that role made me scared because people that are evil don't bother me. It's the ones that kind of walk the line or are unpredictable that scare the ever-loving shit out of me because it's like, look, he might help you out. Like, look at Two-Face. He's on the bed, and he's like, hey, you want to come help me? We can work together. Uh, we yeah. could, you know, do this. Yeah. So you never know what he's going to do, and he's so unpredictable. That's what makes him scary, because evil people are, are going to do evil shit, period. Well, yeah, and that was the thing that, that made it so tough for Batman in that movie. is like you had no idea what was going to happen next. Yeah. Even as the audience, you're like, what's going to happen next? Yeah. And, of course, you got to give a lot of credit to Christopher Nolan. I mean, he's done his homework, and the, he did, the stuff he did with miniatures, mind-blowing. Oh. I mean, 
insane. Like, it looked beautiful, the things he did. And he took, like, an old uh, parking garage but turned it into a hospital for the explosion scene. Like, he, he, he thinks outside the box. Like, and I, I, that's what I love about Christopher Nolan. I mean, I, I, I'm of the firm belief that he's never made a bad film ever. Look at the following. Look, I mean, look at Insomnia. Like, he's done all these phenomenal films. Uh, Memento. If we can't talk enough about Memento. Uh, that film... I, movie you can only really see once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is so deep. Uh, but the guy knows movies, and of course, Inception. I mean, the, the list goes on. The guy's yeah. made phenomenal films. Uh, Interstellar. I mean, it's it's amazing what he's done. And I think when he got the role of being the director for the Batman series, you know, before that, I mean, was there anything else up after Batman and Robin that we'd seen much? I mean, the the cartoon was already fading off, right, at that oh, time. Yeah. It was already long gone. So there wasn't really much, other than the comics, there really wasn't much Batman to really kind of look at. So it was like, all right, so we're kind of rebooting the series, we're rebooting the universe, and, and you know, and like you said, I, I treat it as its own separate entity. And for me, it's like... It, it, in Dark Knight Rises, one of the saving graces, I actually really like jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I thought his character was interesting. Uh, had enough, uh, you know, he had enough to do. Uh, he had enough to do in the film, but it was like, you know, you didn't really know what was going to happen at the end. I thought, I, I can't spoil her. Obviously, the movie <laughs> spoilers. I don't know. Deuce and I haven't really talked about spoilers yet. Uh, you can and, say whatever you I think want. His three movies are a as very a whole, nice, yeah. self-contained. Now, I'm not going to lie. The the one with Heath Ledger in the middle is my favorite of the three. The first one I is okay. The third one I could completely leave just because I just didn't like it. It, it just was too long. It just, I don't know. The I, only I, thing was, that got me at the end of the, at the Dark Knight Rises is when he's, Batman's ready to take the bomb out yeah, of the city. Yeah. And, and Gordon's like, going, we don't even know who you are. He goes, like, it's just as simple as putting a coat on someone and telling him he's going to be all right. And he goes, Bruce Wayne, I think I was in tears at that yeah, point. Yeah, it was, was awesome. I yeah. sobbing. I was like going, he tied it all around yep. up. He brought it back. To the first film, to yeah. the first moment of the first film, and I'm like yep. going, I'm good. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think the thing that that messed that one up for me is at the very end, like you see the bomb go off, and then you see later him and uh, Selena Kyle are like in France or Italy somewhere having oh, breakfast. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, if they left that scene out, I probably would have been fine. Like if it was like Batman, you know. Took the bullet for the city. He's got a new Batman in place. Like, he feels like he's done what he needed to do with his life. I would have been fine. But it's like, oh, no, you know, I've got my new girlfriend. I'm chilling in Italy. <laughs> I'm super rich. I do what I want. It's like, no, dude, no. That's not Batman. Batman doesn't take days off. I he doesn't that, get a vacation. I think that was Nolan trying to base in reality because he was right. in such bad shape by that point. Well, Mr. Wayne, your knees are shot. Your elbows are shot. You have no spleen. You're, yeah. You really shouldn't be doing this anymore. Which I actually liked. That was one of the things I really liked about Dark Knight Rises was the fact that you know that's real. Like if you're being, if you're gonna be doing this, he's not a superhero. He's not like a in, in you know in you know um, an immortal or whatever. Like he has real. He's a real human in, in the suit, and that's what I think people gravitate towards Batman so much is the fact that he is just a guy and he's gone through this horrible tragedy. He's he kind of takes that. Uh, he's literally wearing it on himself. Like you know, you people wear it on their sleeves. Where he's wearing it over his whole body. You know, that's what I love. It's kind of a nice little allegory there. Uh, about Batman is, is he's one of us, you know, and he's had to deal with, all of us have dealt with death and, and different things in our own way, and this is his way to help people out, and the whole Batman doesn't kill, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think, like, he's honorable in that way, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't talk enough about, you know, the, just the lore of Batman. is so intriguing to me. Uh, we can go into the other villains later on, but uh, I just... Good job, Christopher Nolan. Awesome. Um, Bruce Tim, uh, Paul Dini, phenomenal. If, I mean, this this little homework for people that have not checked out Batman's past history. Animated series. Animated series. And a couple of the films. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple of the films. 